It's the Half Hour Wasted and Legion of Dudes Podcasts. Hey, this is Jordan from Jersey, and this is what I thought of the comics I read the weeks of December 8th, 15th, and 22nd, 2010. First off, let's start with a comic that came out almost six months ago. That would be Serenity Flowed Out by Patton Oswalt. Uh, it follows the story of three friends of Wash, who... Um, well, I won't spoil that, but it, it, their telling story is about his life, basically, and it's not that entwined with the overall narrative of the TV show Firefly or Serenity, which it's based on, um, but follows more side stories just about his life before he joined the crew. It does have a nice twist at the end that kind of entwines it more with the story of the movie, but I think in general, the fact that it kept itself more separate from everything was, was to its benefit. Then we have Echo, issue number 26, in which our heroes head to Alaska to try to stave off the end of the world. Now, with such heavy subject matters that you might not expect that this particular issue is actually quite funny. There's actually a lot of humor throughout the series, but it really came to the forefront here. Some Ammonite Shamlat jokes and some other things like that. There's also a bit of a twist ending that I had to do some research on because I didn't quite understand it. Apparently, uh, this comic is now tied in with Terry Moore's Strangers in Paradise, which is a very no well-known series that I have to admit I haven't read yet. It's in my queue, along with hundreds of other comics, so I will get to it eventually, and I apologize that I didn't know off the top of my head. But yeah, apparently, somehow in the same universe. I'll have to see how that works out once I actually read Strangers in Paradise and uh, finish off Echo. I believe it ends possibly issue 36. I know it's heading towards a conclusion. Um, very good series, though. Check it out. Then, from Christos Gage, we have Avengers Academy issue number 7, and guess what? It's the return of Giant Man. Now, spoilers, it's Hank Pym. Yes, that's right, the character who's constantly changing his identity has done it yet again. They actually spend some time on that in the issue, though, so it's not done cheekily. They actually, hey, they point it out and they explain why it's been done, and he kind of comes to terms with it to an extent. Now, to be honest, I'm not a huge Hank Pym fan. Uh... He just doesn't do a whole lot for me, but lately, as better writers like Christos Gage here, Tim Seeley over in the Ant-Man and Wasp miniseries, have got a chance to really delve into him, I'm kind of coming around to the character, kind of. Um, still, though, this is a very good issue focusing on him, kind of his guilt over the Wasp. His guilt's been a big plot point for a while now, it's not like it's anything new, but I felt like they did it very well here, and uh, hey, Giant Man's back, so that's big. <laughs> Puns, yeah. Whatever. Next comic. So next up, from Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos, we have The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 650 with a brand new costume. Why does Spider-Man have a brand new costume? Well, it's because of the new Hobgoblin. Because of his sonic scream powers and all that, Spider-Man has to come up with a new way to fight him. It works well in the story. There's a lot of great jokes, including some references to Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, which I've seen. Maybe a review, video review on that later. Definitely there'll be an audio review up on hhwlod.com soon. But, um, yeah. I've seen it. Back to the comic, there's some references to that, some other musical jokes, actually, that I think work pretty well, and I'm enjoying the new Hobgoblin. Uh, it's similar to the way that they did Venom, make him the dark version of Peter Parker, but they're really doing that pretty well uh, here with the new Hobgoblin. I don't want to give things away, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm not a huge Goblin guy in general, but I like what they're doing. And I'm loving the new Spider-Man costume they're using here for these few issues. My one complaint would be, why is it orange on the cover and green on the inside of the book? I'm assuming it's going to be explained at some point in the comic, but it's strange at this point. I mentioned a little bit earlier, but don't forget to check out hhwlod.com. That's the home of the Legion of Dudes podcast, which I'm on. Also, check out walkingdeadtv.com. That's the home of the Walking Dead TV podcast, which I'm also on. We are gearing up for our 2010 end-of-the-year awards to discuss our favorite comics, movies, actors, actresses, uh, TV shows, and some of our least favorites as well. So you're going to want to check that out. We're also doing tons of giveaways over on walkingdeadtv.com. If you want to win some Walking Dead books... Tune in to find out how. You can also tune in to find out how to get some cheap books from dcbservice.com. I'm not going to give it away here, but uh, you can save yourself some serious scratch, so go over and check that out. And let's get back to the comics, but before I do that, I do just want to point out the mustache Fu Manchu thing. It's a long story, but let's just... In, succinctly, it's a joke. So let's get back to the comics now and forget this ever happened. Next up, we have Superior Issue Number 3 from Mark Miller and Lino Yu. I apologize if I mispronounced that. In the first issue, Superior gets his powers. In the second, he figures out how to use them and has a lot of fun doing so. Here in Issue Number 3, he reveals himself to the world, saving person after person, uh, averting all sorts of disasters, and generally just having a great time. And then there's a twist at the end. Oh boy, is there. And I'm interested to see where this goes. I mentioned earlier, he gets his powers from a monkey in a spacesuit. And let's just say there might be more to that monkey in a spacesuit that meets the eye, and that is not a sentence I thought I'd be saying anytime soon. 
From Daniel Way, we have Deadpool issue number 30, in which Deadpool fights vampires to save vampires. Really, that's that's the plot of the comic. It's actually a lot of fun, and with Bong Dazu on the pencils, it feels a lot like Deadpool Merc with a mouth towards the beginning before it kind of got a little bit old, uh, so I really enjoyed it. I'm not really sick of the vampire thing as much as a lot of people are. If it's done right, or done in a fun way like it was here, I'm all for it. And don't worry, if you're not following the X-Men and I think the Curse of the Mutants thing is them, you don't really need to. I haven't been reading any of it, and it didn't uh, impair my enjoyment or understanding of this comic in any way whatsoever, so that's a good thing. Finally this week, we have Secret Avengers issue number 8 from Ed Brubaker. This issue is a pretty straightforward action piece, um, but it was quite enjoyable, and the ending makes me quite interested for issue number 9. In this issue, the Shadow Council sets a trap for the Secret Avengers using Fu Manchu and his ninjas. Well, I should note that they've actually renamed the character to Zhang Zhu to get around some rights issues with the, with the name Fu Manchu. Um, but at least they can call him a name now and not just shang Chi's father over and over again, because that was getting kind of old. Um... Let's just say the Secret Avengers do not come out better at the end of this trap. Um, they pretty much fell for it hook, line, and sinker, and really I wish they'd be a little bit smarter there. Come on, Secret Avengers, you're like the special ops guys, you're supposed to know this kind of stuff. That said, good issue, the art continues to be beautiful, and I cannot wait for the rest of the series. So that's it for what I thought of the comics I read the weeks of December 8th, 15th, and 22nd. Hopefully I won't fall this far behind uh, anytime soon. Don't forget to check out walkingdeadtv.com, hhwlod.com. Follow me on Twitter at JordanFRMJersey. That's at JordanFRMJersey. And uh, hey, have a good week and happy holidays, and I will see you next time. It's the Half Hour Wasted and Legion of Dudes podcast.